Chris actually didn't start the first game. I think Craig McKinnon started her in I think first couple games. All of a sudden, Chris starts his third game, and you see that Flynn magic. It took a few games before I was finally able to establish myself. I think it was the Acadia TSN game. At that key point, Chris starts going backwards further and further and further, ends up, you know, uh, going one way, going the other way. He slips and drops the ball. The ball bounces right back up into his hand. He goes back a little further, then he turns the corner, turns around, and comes straight back up and, and throws a pass to Brian Smith, who was about nine yards downfield from their line of scrimmage, which was ended up being about a 30-yard pass, and ended up getting the first down. In a nationally televised game, Chris Flynn showed why Larry Utech called him the best Sandlot player in Canada. The big thing in the crowd was, we got a team. Yeah, you could just feel that sense in the crowd. We beat them and that gave the team confidence and turned the team and turned the program around. From what the veterans told me, they used to lose games like that all the time. So this was the first time for a lot of the veterans winning a game in the last few seconds on a last minute drive. Going kind of from coming that losing attitude to uh, more of a winning, and we, we know we, we in the last three minutes of the game we could win a game. That was a lot was driven by Chris, and a lot was driven by our maturity over the years. You know, Michael Jordan once said, "You gotta learn to lose before you can learn to win." Well, we learned to lose. Chris, when he came down that summer, we bonded. He hung out with his offensive linemen, with the Louis Alsatches and Mario Bonnies and Shane Doyles and Richard McLean and. Those guys were so tight-knit. We were not going to lose. We were brothers. Chris Flynn arrived at St. Mary's with a 49-2 record as a starting quarterback in high school and CJF. He was on a string of five straight championships. His mindset is, you know, we're going to win the Vandy Cup. And he's thinking about how we're going to do that. So there's a guy who's got supreme confidence in his ability, supreme confidence in, in the people he's got wrapped around him. But again, no expectation anything less than playing for a national title. To me, the most monumental shift at St. Mary's University we went from being a team that's used to losing, now we've got a winning record. We look out and there's a sign saying, buy your tickets for next, next week's AUA championship. Acadia was assuming that they had the championship game if we won that game there, he was back at St. Mary's. Chris played phenomenal. The whole team played great. It was a team effort. We beat them. There's nothing more sweet. You back on that bus and see that, that sign that said, buy your AUA championship, you know, and realize somebody's going to have to go up there Monday morning and change that sign. Welcome to today's CIAU Eastern Semifinal Championship game between the number three ranked OQ IFC champions, the McGill Redmen, and the number four ranked AUAA champions, the St. Mary's Huskies. With St. Mary's leading McGill 29-27, Flynn throws an interception that gives the Redmen one more chance. Chuck Pettipaw, the kicker who kicked the field goal, he had come on a recruiting trip that summer to St. Mary's, but he decided uh, at the last minute to go to McGill. But he nailed it on the last play of the game, and that was my first playoff loss. In 88, we got a few key acquisitions. We ended up getting Matt Nealon and Ian McDonald. We went 10-0. We killed everyone. Bishops had the number one ranked defense. We beat them in the Atlantic Bowl 44-10. So that was a pretty good year. Flynn at UTEC's first Atlantic Bowl victory was marred by a serious injury to the Husky star quarterback. Back then, concussions were not like they are now, that's for sure. I was always able to avoid hits, but on that particular play I rolled out, I cut back in a defensive lineman, tackled me from behind, kind of driving me into the ground, and then a defensive back kind of came and speared me from the front. I had a black eye almost immediately, and there was blood all in my eye. He was very slow to get up, and it got quiet, right? And the sidelines got quiet, you know, not just the crowd, like, you know, what's going on? We knew something was wrong. Today, there was no way I would have ever been allowed to go back in that game, but I had to sit out for about 10 minutes, and I remember I could not see the scoreboard. The whole rest of the game, I had to keep asking everyone, how much time is left, what's the score? I wanted to go back in. I convinced the doctor and everyone else to, to let me go back in. 
as soon as I went back in, I think we scored like three touchdowns in the last five minutes of the second quarter, and we blew the game open. I uh, went home at like eight o'clock and went to bed on a Saturday night after we won our first Atlantic Bowl. The morning after his first Atlantic Bowl victory, Larry Utek learned that his mother, Joanne, had passed away. It was like one of the biggest days of his life. And the next morning, uh, mom died. That was very difficult. And then it was also Chris Flynn was injured and he had the hairline fracture. I practiced all that week. I had headaches and stuff. I had to wear sunglasses during the daytime because of the light. But I still thought I was playing in the Vanier Cup. And just a few hours before winning my first Heck Creighton, they told me that uh, the doctor said I could suffer, you know, brain damage or more serious damage if I played. And um, I, I was arguing with them. I said, I'm still playing. And they said, no, the school is saying, no, they're not letting you play. And uh, it was extremely upsetting. I was on a bus to Toronto, actually, a few days later. Uh, with about 45 other St. Mary's students heading to the, to the Vanier Cup in Toronto. We find out Chris Flynn had a hairline skull fracture and he wouldn't be playing. And, you know, the word goes around on the bus and it was, you know, almost like uh, somebody had died. Uh, the, the mood on the bus all of a sudden just took this huge nosedive. Um, it's as if uh, people sensed it that, you know, the chances of St. Mary's winning were drastically reduced. Larry Utek made a gutsy call to put slot back Bill Scollard at quarterback in the championship. Scullard, who had only played 12 minutes as a quarterback in his career, set Vanier Cup records for completions and attempts. We lost Chris Flynn, who one, was our best quarterback in, in the country. Two, we lost one of our best receivers, Bill Scullard, who had to move from receiver to quarterback. So um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a tough pill to swallow. Bill Scullard had a great game and kept us in there for three quarters, and he didn't even practice quarterback all year. His story is an unbelievable story in itself, but uh, that happens, you get injured and you miss games. For me, it just happened to be the Vanier Cup and that was the first game I ever was injured for. In 1989, UTEC had to fight complacency on the top right Huskies. The 1988 CIAU Coach of the Year was the toughest test they'd face until meeting Western in the Atlantic Bowl. Know what the hell you're doing? You guys out there catch the ball, carry it back, and put it down beside the center. You guys get to be stars. You get to you get your name up there in the paper. People write and say you're gonna you guys score a touchdown. In my first two years, we were prepared for McGill and Bishops. We didn't have a lot of competition in '89, and that hurt us. And then we played a great Western team, who I think were the best team we played in all my four years. In a rematch of the 1989 Atlantic Bowl, the Huskies faced the defending national champion Western Mustangs. It was a seesaw battle in what some say was the greatest game in Canadian university football history. Flynn back to pass, looking for Nealon. Touchdown, touchdown St. Mary. 2.15 to go, Nealon closest to you, Mongi in motion, there's the pass for McDonald, touchdown. St. Mary's, and the Huskies are back. The Huskies are back. The Huskies got the ball on their 35-yard line with one minute and 15 seconds left in the game. Back to pass. Going deep in the end zone. Touchdown, St. Mary's! Oh, touchdown, St. Mary's! I was crying after I caught it. I was shaking with joy. So excited at that moment. Even at this crucial time, Larry Utek let Chris Flynn orchestrate that final drive. The key to that last drive, despite the coaches screaming and yelling at me, to send plays in and help Chris out, I said, no, I, that was Chris Flynn. And uh, the best coaching I did in that last drive was to do nothing. He would let Chris call his own plays because he, he sensed that Chris had a feel for the game in certain situations. So he would let us basically kind of ad lib it. Chris and I sometimes would talk and we'd almost do like little sandlot plays where we'd, you know, sort of scratch things out on the turf. I said, Chris, you know, I'm going to sort of chop this guy, pretend I'm lying there. So if you get in trouble, just throw a little screen pass to me. And sure enough, on that particular play, it worked out perfectly. 
St. Mary's would head to Toronto to play the Saskatchewan Huskies for what was dubbed the dogfight in the dome. It would be the only time Chris Flynn would play in the Vanier Cup. Guys, it was a great game against Western and everything, but a couple years ago we had a great game against Bishops. And everyone thought we were heroes and everything, and then we lost the next game, the next week, we were bums. So, you know, we beat West and everything, but don't be happy with that. We still got one more game left. This place is great. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn threw three touchdown passes in the game, including two TDs to Matt Nealon. But St. Mary's trailed 24 21 with 21 seconds left. From the Saskatchewan 36 yard line, Chris Flynn was orchestrating another comeback and might have, were it not for a missed block. Now he's going to drop the ball. Saskatchewan, if they pick it up, they'll win it. Now they drop the ball. It's still free. Saskatchewan's got it. Sad way to end it for Chris Flynn. For the third year in a row, injuries hurt the Huskies at a key time. The Huskies' lack of depth was by design, but it proved to be their downfall. He didn't believe in over-recruiting, you know, to have 110 guys at training camp because it, it just can lead to a lot of discontent on the team when you have too many superstars. Um, and then, you know, it, it was tough in respect, especially recruiting in Atlanta, Canada, a lot of kids wouldn't come here because they knew that they'd be sitting in the pines for the next two to three years and they didn't want that. Talking these 18 year olds into borrowing 40, 50 grand to go to play football, when realistically you borrow 40, 50 grand and go buy a house, right? Don't play football, right? And he said he had real trouble uh, trying to talk kids into coming to Halifax. One injury, two injuries was gonna was really gonna impact our our success, and you know, it, and it didn't matter if it was a if it was a, a quarterback or a, or a tight end or a slot back. It was always uh, we just didn't have that depth that needed to go through a full season without having any injuries. So once you started having injuries, we were we were done. In the four years that Chris Flynn was the quarterback for the St. Mary's Huskies, the team won four Atlantic Conference Championships and two Atlantic Bowls. They were arguably the best team to not win a Vanier Cup. We won a lot of football games, but we ended up in the end never winning the Vanier Cup, which even to this day, um, still think about not winning that cup. But I mean, the people that we met on that team, the, bond, the friendships that were made from that team, it, it helped us further in life and maybe not winning the Vanny Cup even gave us that extra push to work harder and achieve our goals. Almost everybody that plays sports learns more from the losses versus the wins. So uh, maybe it does motivate you a little bit um, because you've learned so much from it, but it's not something I look back on and, and totally regret. I'm, I was. I'm glad I was a part of it, and it was um, you know, one of those things that you'll never, ever forget.